here comes the fun part. Squeezing this monstrosity down through the woods. And I can barely fit. There's two fence posts, two really, really old Osage fence posts around the edge of this opening and it barely squeezes through like I had to scrape through. Okay. Now I learned I'm coming up. Man, that turbo. This thing kind of reminds me of a uh, very early 7.3 power stroke that's turbo. I know some Ford guys are going to be like, oh, you idiot, it doesn't sound anything like it. I think it does. At least the turbo. It's got that sputtery whistle. Man, that's in there. There we go. That's probably the most ingenious idea, really. Use the same pin, or use a one pin, two holes to be able to lock your markers up. That's ingenious. I hope the guy at White got a bonus for that. Or my bad, Oliver, because I bet Oliver had these things designed before White came along. It was in one of the project books and of Oliver and probably said, oh, hey, let's make these. The one thing that White didn't screw up. I still have to say it's probably one of the best planners out there, even compared to my neighbor's Kinsey. You know, that it has good sing singulation, but this thing has awesome singulation. Oh yeah, that's why I want to change that pipe. It just touches it. What's leaking? You? You. Ah, that one. So that one needs a new no O-ring. All that wet's not a head gasket, thankfully. It's just one of the uh, T-boots from the return line for the injector leaking. If I ever upgrade planners, it'd be to probably a six row or an eight row, but if I upgrade to an eight row, I wouldn't even need the splitter anyways. Or I would have to get a different splitter. But if I upgrade to a six row, I don't need that extension of box tube. So I got, you know, two feet hanging off each side that's just in the way and extra weight that I have to pick up. And that bar was actually an eight row, eight row splitter bar. So I thought splitters were always an odd number. Unless it was two eight rows and it was this cattywampus. Well, that's a stump. I guess when we thought we had to clear out for the combine, we should have cleared more out. I actually never driven the combine up through here yet. I had a neighbor ended up letting me go through his field. That's how he got in. There's an entrance at the his field. All right, there's that stump that about flipped the planter over. So I'm gonna go fast and slow, or just hang on this side of it. Nudge on past it. Oh, 
hopefully don't blow the tire up because the plant the sidewalls on those tires on the planter are very iffy. They're very split. Alright, fast that zip over here. This is so not fun. Ah, sticks. I hate driving stuff through the woods. This thing, this 1855, when I had the cab on it, I used to drag logs out with it. It just always made me nervous when you come up to a stick. There's multiple times we ripped the muffler off. Now it's back on its muffler, now it's straight pipe. Ever since I basically, ever since I started grain farming, not a single tractor has never come back to the woods. Except for like 13, because it's got a loader. So it's kind of... Alright, that didn't hurt anything. Except it's kind of stuck on it. But the 13... Thirteen was the only one that came back here in the little New Holland Compact. Most of the New Holland Compact, when we got that thing, it became the main log puller. It's really small, you don't have to butcher past the woods to get the trees. And it's, you know, four-wheel drive, it's pretty powerful. It's a great little log skitter. I mean, some of the big ones you have to get with the thirteen, but... Stupid neighbor trees. You can see how much dirt I scraped out to fill that creek crossing in. Keep washing out. So far, knock on wood, it hasn't washed out yet. Alright, hang on this side, because I will clip that tree if I don't. Alright, over here, over here. Come on, planter. Follow. There we go. Uh oh. Alright. Oh, that was close. About snagged the planter box. That one sucked. Alright, we're out. We're out of the woods. Doo -doo